Here we go. Recording. Alrighty. In the last, in the first half of this video, I, we started talking about installing a nut plate. I've gone ahead and drilled the holes out uh, to a number 10, and then I used my nut plate tool to locate and drill the number 40 holes for my rivets. Next step is to take your little deburring tool here. Again, you can buy this at almost any aircraft supply, the yard, ATS tool supply, uh, aircraft spruce, a number of them. This is a 10 or $15 tool. And you just take it, put it in there, and you want to take and just deburr the edges of this hole. And you go in behind here and do the same thing from behind. There we go. You want to make sure to get all those little burrs off of there. And the reason for that is burrs under a rivet in aircraft aluminum, as this flexes in flight, can create a stress point and cause a crack to form. So that's a safety feature, and it's just good professional craftsmanship to clean the burrs off. Next step is we'll take and Cleco the nut plate on. Now, I use the number 10 size hole for my nut plate tool to center the nut plate tool and then drill the number 40 size holes. Once I finished that, I went ahead and drilled this out to a quarter inch. And you'll see why in just a second here. Take and put the nut plate in behind the surface here. And drop a Clico in there. Line up the other hole. That will hold that in place while you take and rivet the nut place into place. Go ahead and put my rivet in here. Uh, my, uh, my tool is getting worn out. It's got about... 20 some odd years of service under its belt and it's really starting to get bad on me. There we go. Line that up. You might want to just take a look and make sure you got the hole through the nut plate. I've done that before of driving rivets and then realize that I'd missed the hole there. I don't think this tool is going to work very good either. My squeeze tools are starting to get a little bit squeezed out on me. The uh, grips on them are going bad. Hmm. Well, in that case, let's try a different one. <laughs> Come out of there. And turn that down. Put this other one in there. You have a variety of sizes of attachments for these tools for the different size rivets that you'll be pulling. And as you can see, it's probably somewhat critical to make sure you have the right size in there. Now we go ahead and give her another shot. That's a little better. We'll put this back in the socket where it belongs. And line up my hole. Ah, oh, much better. The right tool for the job. Now I felt it pull through. It should pop out of there pretty quick. <laughs> I definitely have to get a new hand squeezer. There we go. And out comes that tang. Now we take and pull the Clico back out of here. And we make sure that that hole is lined up on the other side. Take a good look at it and visually confirm that you're getting the rivet through the nut plate hole. There we go. Nothing like pulling a rivet only to find out that you didn't get it through the hole on the nut plate. That'll make your day. 
And we'll go ahead and squeeze this one. Yeah, these tools are getting pretty worn out. There we go. All right. Now, maybe we can bring the camera around here and take it straight on shot close up. I we'll have to reach over here and put that in the. Uh, mm -hmm. There we go. And you can see where this nut plate floats in this hole back here. So you got plenty of size. Now this is a number 10 nut, a 1032 stainless steel screw that's going to go through here. And you can see we have a quarter inch opening allowing this to float. So putting in your nose cone isn't going to be such a tremendously stressful job. Now on the on here I will be putting a piece of rubber coating to act as a cushion between the back side of the nose cone and this aluminum plate. So these rivets sticking out, you could put flush mount rivets in if you wanted to dimple it and go to that process. However, I chose to use these knowing full well that my rubber gasket will be glued on here to provide a cushion between this plate and the nose cone itself. And I'll just take a leather punch tool and punch a hole through the, leather, through the rubber strip to open this up so that the screw can go through. And that's all there is to it, folks. Thank you.